Oh hey, if you're ready to spice up your life and your textiles, you're gonna love today's episode. You're my baby. You're my baby. Hello and welcome to a very special episode of Laugh Cry DIY Quarantine Edition. My boyfriend got COVID, he's okay, but I've been caretaking for him, we've been quarantining, I haven't left the house, I have no projects planned, but I could not leave my precious, precious people without a video this week. And Earth Day is coming up and I've been wanting to do some sort of cool, eco-friendly, low-waste project, but because we've been locked down, I have not been able to leave the house. So in a panic, I went wandering around my house, looking into every cupboard, looking for something to possibly make over for you, and I found the perfect thing. Two very boring, very white pillowcases, as well as a throw pillow case that I bought for $2 two years ago and thought, I'll definitely do something with this this week, and it's been two years. Perfect. Hold on. Do you want to be in the episode or not? Come here. So I wanted to make over these pieces in some sort of way, but I couldn't get to the craft store. So I thought, why not turn to the best craft store of all time, Mother Nature. So I started creeping the internet and I realized that I actually had two things in my pantry that I could totally turn into a beautiful natural dye. Now I think we can all agree that we have all wanted to be Spice Girls at some point in our life. And today we are going to be, because the first product we are going to use today is a spice. Are you ready? And the very special guest star of today's episode is <gasps> Turmeric. She's bold, she's outspoken, she's ready for summer. Now the next guest star of this episode is someone very beautiful, very gorgeous, and that is Hamaika, AKA Hibiscus Flowers. So we are going to use Miss Turmeric and Miss Hibiscus to make some really, really beautiful pillows. Now here's what you need to know about using natural materials to dye things. You gotta use natural fabrics. Today we're using cotton, which is great. And you need to use a fixative to prepare the fabric so that when the dyes come in, they actually stick around and don't leave like your father. Too real, sorry. So step one, we're gonna prepare the fabric. Now we're gonna create a little fixative bath. This is actually called a mordant, which is like what binds the dye to the fabric. Mordant is a word that I just learned. Now internet says that if you're using berries or fruits to dye your fabric, you need to use salt as your fixative. But if you're using plant-based materials, you're gonna use vinegar. Now I've seen various different recipes for how much you're supposed to put in. Some people say it's like one part vinegar to three parts water. This pot is like halfway filled. We're just gonna put in half of this bottle of white vinegar. and boil the fabric in the water for an hour. Other people say 30 minutes. As we know, the internet is nothing but opinions and lies. So I'm gonna let this go for like, I'd say 45 minutes. Alrighty, it has been 45 minutes. And the internet says to wash these out in cold water to make sure that that fixture stays in. Next up, I washed this pot out and we're gonna use this for our hibiscus dye bath. And we're gonna fill our next pot with turmeric. All right, folks, well, now let's talk about spices, all right? Apparently, according to internet, turmeric is what's called a fugitive dye. Every time you wash it, it leaves. Apparently, in India, where they dye things with turmeric, you're expected to re-dye turmeric garments once a year. Is that true? If you're watching from India, and I know some of you are, have you heard of that before? I don't know how strong the dyes will be. I don't know if they will dye the colors exactly that I have in my mind. But today, we're gonna let Mother Nature be our creative director, so we'll see. They say like three tablespoons of turmeric. <gasps> I'm gonna do four because I want to be really intense. And we're gonna stir that. Oh my gosh, look at that color. 
I'm gonna simmer it for probably an hour. And now let's talk about the hibiscus bath. Now hibiscus flowers are interesting. Although they can look really bright and bold and like magenta, something about the science, something about the witchery magic of them is that if the pH balance is off with the thing, they will turn blue. I am gonna use this entire bag of flowers because whatever color it is, we want it to be bold and in your face and aggressive. It's looking beautiful. And I have been messaging with Rachel of Mr. Blue Sky. She's an amazing fiber artist. She does like all natural dyes. You should check out her work. And she just gave me all of the hot tips. So here's everything you need to know. These are gonna be semi-permanent dyes. You want to simmer them on low because actually if you boil them, you can actually boil the color apparently out of the universe. And also, once these are done, I'm going to want to wash these items in cold water and wash them individually anytime I'm going to wash them going forward. But what's really cool about these is that they actually do fade over time so much that you can actually then re-dye the fabric whatever you want. Very sustainable. And you can see these are looking so beautiful. Um, one great tip I heard long ago was that anytime you're doing dye, like just use a white paper towel to just like dip in and kind of get a sense of what the color's looking like. All right, now is the serious moment where we remove the petals from the hibiscus. Ooh, alrighty. So this is the moment, as I'm halfway off screen, that we're gonna dip our first one in. Ah! I'm just gonna put this plate in, and that will weight it down. And then I'm gonna come in every now and again and stir, and hopefully that will give us a nice, beautiful, vibrant color. Okay, so this hibiscus has been sitting here for like over an hour. And I think when I rinse it out, I'm gonna see how light it actually is. And this is such a beautiful color and trust and believe it's about to change into a, probably a weird blue, but that's fine. Is this just like gym t-shirt gray now? Wow. I actually want to do a little two-tone on these and I want to do a dip dye effect where one part of the fabric is actually darker than the other. Oh, shut it. So I'm going to take them and I'm just going to kind of dip them about halfway. Okay, I'm putting that plate rim down to get most of this submerged. I'm going to leave this here for like two hours. Okay, it's been an hour and something I did not think about was that the uh, liquid would spread. This is a mess. Okay, we're at a light lavender. I'm gonna do something crazy right now. I'm gonna make a beet dye. We got canned sliced beets and pickled beets. Okay, so let's just give those an hour. In the meantime, let's see how our beautiful, gorgeous yellow is doing. Well, we had one moment of hell, but one moment of total heaven because this is like the dream color. And I know it's gonna get a little lighter once it dries, but so far I'm thrilled. I think this baby is good to go. Alrighty, one hour later, let's do a paper towel test. Let's see how this Baby's looking. I know it looks light, but um, but I think that this is a good thing to just fix some of that color, you know? They're going back in. Hopefully, even if it's a light pink tint, hopefully it'll help it become the beauty it wants to be. Okay, we're looking like a blush pink lavender. You know it's been three hours. And who knows if it's any darker. Um, we're just hoping at this point that it's barely a color.
Oh no. You guys, I can't. I think this is my worst fail of all time. I don't understand. It's, it's grayish. Do, do you see? Look at this color. <laughs> Genuinely, I don't think we can get worse. So I think I'm just straight up gonna put it in the yellow dye. Goodbye to all of the work I've tried. Guys, it's 11 p.m. at night. Yeah. All right, you guys. Eight hours later. There's junk everywhere. This has become a mess. Let's see. Okay. Alrighty, it looks like we have a really beautiful, rich mustard color, and I'm not mad about that. So we're gonna throw these in the dryer, and at long last, I think it's ready for your big reveal. <laughs> Well, you guys, that was today's episode, and it was something that I tried. I should have added a pattern, I should have done more research, you know. So if you want to see me mess up more projects, go ahead and subscribe. And please, comment below and tell me the worst DIY mistake you ever made, because I feel dumb. You're so cute. You're so cute.